Hello everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of the John and Abraham show. I guess I'm not really John to you. I'm like dad, right? Well, yeah. You don't ever call me John. No. That's the toilet's <laughs> That's the toilet's name. <laughs> what? <laughs> we named the toilet John. King John. Hi. We've decided today to talk about whatever is on our mind. It is a talk show between Daddy O and Abraham O. And Yuzo Kishiro. And <laughs> Yuzo Kishiro. Sega is firing 650 people three days ago. Here's Japan today. How would they today. do that? They're just like... They closed all their arcades. They uh, shut, they're getting out of the arcade business. Can you imagine how many arcades in Japan that Sega owns? They're oh. shutting them all down. But they're like, like 650 they're people are losing arcades. Them. They were, yeah. They basically made, they were the king of ping pong balls. Yeah, they had, what? Uh, I'm thinking of like this other game. Well, let's talk about this today. So this is from the Japan Times. Sega troubles continue as company asks hundreds of employees to quit. It hasn't been the brightest time for Sega. On Wednesday, the once monolithic video game developer, I don't know if Sega's ever been monolithic. It's monolithic. Monolithic is like the one, like kind of like, it means singular and big and grand. Like the one, oh, almost they're like, not monolithic. no, they're Nintendo. They're kind of Nintendo was second, monolithic, they're kind not of Sega. This, the second, the like, if this, if the game was, if game world, if the game world was split up into like royalties, um, I feel like the king would be Nintendo, and then the prince would be like, the prince or like the person who's gonna be the next king would be. Sega. Probably like, well, I think maybe the the princes would be like Xbox and Microsoft, uh, and probably Sega would work in the kitchen or something. Yeah, now, now, okay. So we agree, we, we agree, Sega's not exactly monolithic, but yeah. on in here, the once monolithic video game developer announced that it has sold off the management of nearly 200 arcades it manages in, J in Japan. A point of clarity. Sega is specifically selling 85% of its arcade business to a company called Genda. This entails 193 video game arcades. However, Genda is not intending to close these facilities, but rather they want to continue to manage them. They will even keep the Sega branding. Sega Sammy, for their part, has taken a major financial beating because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and the sale is necessary for the company to reduce losses to their investors. But customers will still be able to go to the remaining arcades, just not the giant flagship Sega arcade in Akihabara. That arcade is already closed for good back in August. Glad I could clear that up. They've sold off nearly 200, citing negative effects of coronavirus has had on the sector of the entertainment industry. I guess like- Coronavirus has nothing to do with this. Well, it does because if no one can come to, come to the arcades, then how can you make any money? Hmm, hmm. Mr. Smarty well, Pants. what? What? Why, why would they close arcades? If they close the arcades forever and they get rid of the arcades, then that means that's more space for Nintendo arcades. I don't, wow, Nintendo arcades, this is a novel idea. That might happen, because like, if Nintendo sees that Sega's closing all this like, arcades, they see, well, we have, we, like, I mean, we have a lot of money. We have space. All right, you've already here. Space. Nintendo arcades are the future. <laughs> they are the future of the arcades. Either that or home video game consoles. That could also be the future, maybe. <laughs> we don't know yet. Yeah, it's not really home. I mean, it's if you, I mean, if you see home video consoles, it's not much like that. Right. It's like a million wires. All right, so let's get through this. To play so, Mario. <laughs> uh, so now comes shrinking of the human res. Okay, now comes shrinking of human resources. This is this is what it says. Now comes shrinking of the human resources <laughs> variety. This is translated from Japanese. So now comes the shrinking of human resources variety, as parent company Sega Sammy Holdings is looking for hundreds of hundreds of employees to willingly quit their jobs. We want you to commit seppuku. In Jap listen, Japan, like I know you're a society that likes homogeneity, you like really kind of people to kind of like join together in harmonious, like singular action. You don't all have to commit seppuku just because so your Japanese boss says, I say, hold on to your job and let them give you a good severance package. 
They're gonna fire you for working at their arcades. That thankless job! That thankless job working at the arcade. I don't know how long you've been there. Maybe you've been there six months. Maybe you've been there six years. Either way, probably too long. You, you need a little something else. You need to get in there and be like an American and pull as much out of those bastards as you can, all right? They can't just take your job like that. They took their job. They took our job. They took our job. They took your job. They took your job. They took your job. They took your job. your job. This is not really funny though, because like, I mean, this is a lot of people losing yeah. their jobs. I don't know what these jobs were, like, I mean, I'm, like the running I mean, the arcades. I mean, I'm recharging the batteries. <laughs> <laughs> plugging in the, <laughs> plugging in, in all the video, making just... sure that there is not, I don't know, make, what is it, like making sure people aren't stealing quarters. <laughs> I've seen, we said, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making fun of your job. Your job is awesome and vital. It's kind of like... It's kind of like self manual. Basically, you put it in some. You put in a quarter. And yeah, it's a self serve industry. Yeah, and we've made, and we've made now. We're high technology, so like I, now you can just you can just switch out. You don't actually need to switch out games. Maybe you should have just made self service arcade of Japan. I mean, Sega of Japan. Just just an yeah, idea. Yeah, it's self service. Yeah, I mean, what are, you, not, what are you? Like, what are you hiring all these people to do? It's not like you have to switch out games like you used to, but now it's like. It's like big arcades. Yep. Alright. The move comes in the wake of Sega Sammy's mid-year financial report. Man, those are never good. Let me tell you, I've done a lot of research on Sega in the recent in the last few years. Those those financial reports are pretty sad. The company's business year begins in the spring. As is tradition. Which revealed 21.7 billion yen, 206.7 million dollar loss for the company. All of that has to be COVID related. Because like Sega Sammy owns, they own like hotels. Casinos, pachinko parlors, arcades. It's probably no, it's no exaggeration to say that most of their business would be affected by COVID. Cause they're like, they're the kind of big, like high density public kind of industries where you're getting people in there coughing all over each other. Yeah. There's like old people coming in off the streets. They got their little mask is like dangling off their face. They got like snot coming out one nostril, drool coming down their chin. They're, they're basically like the living dead. They're, uh, they're, they're fighting over pachinko balls. They're throwing them at each other. It's just a complete mess. What are we talking about? Um. <laughs> it's like, but anyway, so yeah, their industry totally going to be slammed by coronavirus. Because it's like, it's like Disneyland. Japan, Japan, if you, if you look at Japan, I mean, we think of Japan as Tokyo, right? But yeah. Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo? it's just Tokyo. It's I mean, like to one city. Basically, just was one city. That's all. And when we think it. about Tokyo, we think about a Sega arcade. We think about like all those like okay, walk around just, like cluttered together, all, like with black hair, same haircut, you know, the same. But like when we're actually thinking about Japan, if we go on Google Maps and just go some random place in Japan, and I did this, I just walk around. It's it's not really like that. It's not. It's, it's a lot more. Of, it's a lot it's more nice. rich and textured and layered. It's and also diverse. kind of nice. It's yeah. like it's, it's like it's, it's like basically just a lot of Seven Elevens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like they go to Seven Eleven. This is the life in Japan. They go to Seven Eleven. They get their onigiri. They go to their job where they do the thing that their boss tells them to do at the computer for about eleven to twelve hours. Then they go home. They look at um, anime. Maybe they go to 7-Eleven for another onigiri. They wake up at four in the morning and they do the same thing. Until they're dead. Until like someone shovels their body <laughs> into a ditch. They just like scrape them off the floor. Yeah. They just put them in a ditch. And they're like, well, we did that. That Japanese salary man is finished. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> That's sort of like life in Japan. It seems like it sucks over there, to be honest. Yeah, it seems pretty like also like <laughs> like what did they do? Like how did they not like stop from turning insane by like, doing the same thing over and over yeah. again every well, day? Have you heard of sake? Oh yeah, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they drink a lot. <laughs> That's how you deal. That's how you cope. <laughs> That's how I cope. No, no. Okay, the move comes in the wake of all of this money they're losing because of COVID. That's an especially painful blow 
after they already had a 9.8 billion yen profit for that same period in 2019. So last year at the same time, Sega was actually doing pretty good. Um, I don't know why, but they were doing pretty good. In order to return to profitability and achieve sustained development, we need to reduce costs. So ergo, fire everybody, especially fixed costs, people, the company said as part of its announcement. And we believe this is a necessary measure to build a more efficient organization. I mean, all of that's pretty obvious to me. It's like you lost a bunch of money. You can't afford to pay people. You can't afford to run arcades. You got to like cut somewhere. Somewhere. Not like at the top. Always at the bottom. That's how it is, corporate America. We're watching you. We're watching you. I mean, you should always get rid of your worst thing. I mean, what if like your worst thing, like turns out, oh, if you didn't cut that, you cut like something like almost higher. That, it turns out if this didn't happen, that thing that was almost higher was actually going to fail. Mm -hmm. And that that thing that at the bottom was going to succeed, but you just made a big mistake. Exactly. And now you lost two things. Exactly. So like, it's, don't always cut the thing at the bottom. Maybe the thing at the bottom actually could turn into the best. Like, what if you just yeah, what about the, that? You gotta think about the long term, Sega. Like, Are if, arcades gonna come back, maybe? I don't know, maybe they will. Or, maybe you could've figured out a long time ago people played their video games in their house. Have you heard of that? In America, we figured that out. We don't play video games at the, at the arcade. Okay. We don't even know how to say the word okay. anymore. Okay. At the arcade. The arcade. You have to go to Dave and Buster's. The thing that is the weird thing about this story, the thing that I find just baffling and that nobody's really, t is the voluntary component. They want 600 people, more than 600 people to voluntarily quit. It represents a roughly 7% reduction from the current number of employees, which is 9,051. And as an additional cost cutting measure, Sega will be reducing its executive salary by up to 30% for the next five months. That's quite a bit until the end of the current business year, with larger reductions being placed on higher ranked executives. So they're gonna like cut salaries at the top. Like, so I was wrong. They're cutting, cutting their, their, their own salary. I don't know what that would be. Employees who volunteer to leave the company won't be walking away empty handed. They're not gonna be walking away empty handed. Each one is gonna get a free copy of the latest Sonic the Hedgehog video game. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> that's <laughs> It does. The <laughs> Sonic video games haven't been good for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want those. You can't even give those away. Employees who volunteer to leave the company won't be walking away empty handed. However, they'll be provided with severance packages and also reemployment assistance for those who will be seeking new jobs elsewhere instead of retiring uh, entirely. Well, that's oh. cool. So, you answered all my questions. Wait, I don't I don't know. You're not gonna retire entirely. Oh, no. okay. I, I don't. Oh, they find me. Okay, I'm gonna just gonna. I'm and this just gonna. Economy, I'm just not gonna do any other job. I, yeah, no. <laughs> not gonna do that. They're gonna like go get a new job. Yeah. It's like <laughs> making those onigiri's at the 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it, man. All right. It's kind of cool. They all like onigiri's at that. So yeah, I mean, some Japanese gas station food is the best. It's like, mwah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Good. all gas stations do is like Cheetos that's been polluted by like, by like something that like from yeah. like the nuclear waste plant. Yeah, not so good. Uh, like, have you ever seen those hot dogs that are rotating for like they look like they've been there for like seven years? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know who's, eat, who's eating those? I've never once seen somebody go into a Seven Eleven in the United States and order a hot dog. But those wieners, they're just they're always on rotation. No, <laughs> when are they gonna stop? Maybe the wieners. Yeah, what are they gonna stop spinning? I don't know. I think if they ever, I think it's like like a Chernobyl situation, where it's like if they ever stop the wieners spinning, there's gonna be some kind of meltdown and everyone's gonna die. So it's like they have to keep those wieners on rotation. They're desperately trying to keep the wieners from moving because if it ever stopped, there'd be like a nuclear explosion or something. <laughs> everyone's gonna die. <laughs> there's like Russian scientists walking around with like their little their little like ra radiation detectors. <laughs> Welcome to the Spinning Wiener Show. Today we're going to feature Spinning Wieners. <laughs> All right. Sa Sega Sammy expects the total cost of providing this aid to come to roughly 10 billion yen, which uh, I don't know the conversion of that, but I'm going to guess it's like still in the billions of dollars. Should it find a group of 650 volunteers? 
This is very troubling for Sega. Mm -hmm. Those opting for the severance package will have until Christmas Day, December 25th, to make up their decision. Way to ruin people's Christmas, Sega. You're going to give people up till December 25th. Why December 25th? Because you know, you know what you're doing to these people. No, because it's like, hey, it's honey, a gift. guess what I got you? Guess what I got you guys for Christmas this year? Uh, like you could see the dad coming home. He's like, kids, honey, honey. It's like that's like wife. Yeah. I've, got, I've got you guys um, a severance package for Christmas. Guess what? We're eating onigiri at the Seven Eleven this year for Christmas dinner. We're actually, you know, what Japanese people really eat for Christmas dinner. What? Kentucky Fried Chicken is true. Kentucky Christmas. <laughs> しかったって気ごと消し去るようにさあパジャマを脱いだらでかけよう少しまだまだ私は国島さんやりたいですかゲンタッキー二十三二十四日のご予約は早めにゲンタッキー乾滝おいしそうだなゲンタッキーフライチ
like me, I just, I don't want to go to no arcade. I'm not going to get in my car and go driving out to Dave and Buster's, even though it's only a few, hour, a few hours from here, and, and uh, give them $20 so I can play 15, 15 seconds of House of the Dead. I'm not doing that. Wait, they actually have House of the Dead? Yeah, there, is, there actually was a recent oh, nice. House of the Dead game that came out like just Wait, this last recent? year. Wait, recent? Oh, that sounds cool. Well, it's good. Is it? Is this a remake? No, it's his new entry in the series. It's like uh, House of the Dead something something something. Like, Scarlet Blood or something like that. It's like House of the Dead X2 million exactly, Scarlet yeah. Moon they should call Death it, they should Zombie call it, Wade they should Take call Over it. Apocalypse X. Exactly. <laughs> they should probably call it House of the We Need New Ideas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now so now comes the next part of our segment, the final part. So what do you guys think? Do you think Sega should fire six hundred fifty people or in this case ask them to um, take a severance package and a free copy of Sonic the Hedgehog? No. As the packing game? Or do you think Sega should continue to lose money, keep the arcades open, but do it for their do it for the comrades? Just pay, just take like a 100% pay cut. Everyone, all of the Sega executives at the top, they should take a 150% pay cut. They should actually give some of their savings over, keep the arcades open, and let everyone keep their jobs so that they can work in that one job forever and ever and ever and ever, even if it doesn't make money and no one wants to go to those arcades anymore ever yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Comrades, you've heard it here. Huh? That is, that's the socialist way. I know, we're not communists. Abe and I are. We're communists. Welcome to the communist show! We are the communist people's party! We will, we will, we will cover two whole countries in, in radiation! That's right, we've been watching um, that show. Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Anyway, so, now comes the most, the, impor the most important part of our show. It's called the game of the week. What the game of the week this week is called... Bonk's Adventure, originally known as PC Genjin, Bonk's Adventure is a side-scrolling platformer that once served as the flagship mascot for the TurboGrafx-16. Released in the United States early in 1990, where despite near-universal critical praise, the game essentially fizzled out on the back of an irrelevant console that most Americans simply didn't want to pay for. The best game of the year in 1990 was definitely Mario 3, but Bonk's Adventure would have easily been in my personal top 10 that year for its charming methodical gameplay and fun cartoonish graphics. It's good clean TurboGrafx-16 fun! Thanks for watching, and please tune in for other Creative Cat Productions videos. Thank you.